stupid. Donald likes to use the word stupid. That was stupid, whoever advised that. Who would want Palin endorsing them? I wouldn't want him to endorse me, and I'm not running for anything. Okay, I made my point. What else is in the news? Uh, Flint, Michigan, and Dirty Water, Supreme Court, to hear Obama amnesty case. Supreme Court refuses to take out. So Trump was in New Hampshire, and he gave a speech against Glenn Beck, which is very funny. Let's hear it, Robert. Sorry. Go ahead. This dopey guy, Glenn Beck, he looks like hell. No, no he's like a dope. He's doing very badly. His thing is falling apart. His company is falling apart. I see him on television. I actually called Bill O'Reilly. I said, Bill, why do you have a guy like that on television? Fox fired him, and then he goes out, does this thing. We heard he was doing well. He's not. But he's on. And the thing that bothered me, he said, Donald Trump voted for Barack Obama. Me. And, and here's the problem. The good thing about having a large microphone uh, is that we can at least explain to people that these people lie. They lie so much. The reason he doesn't like me is because I didn't do a show. He asked me so many times, do my show. Do, and I didn't do it because I don't respect him. I did it because, I, no, I'm so busy. I couldn't do a show. This was a, quite a while ago. I couldn't do a show. And just time-wise. And then, all of a sudden, enough time goes by. And I understand that. So he started hitting me, and that was the end of that. And there are others who are attacking Trump because he won't go on their show. They're making believe it's because of his politics. What, do you think it's not about that? That's all it is. And they're angry that he comes on my show. That's all. They're angry. How do I, Michael Savage, get Donald Trump? How do you... No, 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 no. Okay, what do you want to talk about? Open mic to Mike. 1-800... I don't know the number. 855 I'm still reading a number from eight years ago. But this is my, my, my current number, 855-400-SAVAGE. Look at the sound I haven't gotten to yet. Hillary Clinton again on the classified information. But I think that's a dead subject today. You haven't heard about it yet on another talk show, so you can't think about it. Me being banned in Britain, not a, not a topic because other talk show hosts are jealous that they weren't banned in Britain. So you can't talk about that. The Iran deal, you can't talk about that because you don't know what to say because you haven't heard it yet on the radio. So today, Kerry warned Saudi Arabia of threat. They threatened Saudi Arabia if they get nukes due to, due to the fact that we gave Iran the road to a nuclear weapon. This is what happened now. Your administration, your crazy president, your crazy president has now ditched Saudi Arabia and embraced Iran. Listen to clip number 14. You can't just buy a bomb. And they're all, there's all kinds of NPT consequences. Uh, uh, I mean, there are huge implications of that. Uh, and, and Saudi Arabia knows, I believe, that that is not going to make them safer, nor is it going to be easy, because the very things that Iran went through, they would then be subject to with respect to inspection, NPT, and so forth. So Kerry is warning Saudi Arabia not to get a nuclear weapon because they're afraid of Iran. And so we've taken the side of Iran against Saudi Arabia. Now, I'm not here supporting uh, the Saudi Arabian government. I have a lot of problems with this dictatorship. I have a lot of problems with the, with the Wahhabi sect of Islam that they have disseminated around the world. However, at this time, I would think it's extremely risky to throw Saudi Arabia to the wolves and expect them not to try to get nuclear weapons. That would be commonsensical, but this administration is not known for common sense. 8557, what else? Tom Cotton, he'd be a great guy. He should run with Trump. No one ever heard of him. You don't know who he is. Tom who? He's an actual Iraq war vet. No one ever heard of Tom Cotton, because again, the Republicans pushed him to the back of the bus. All right, listen to Tom Cotton. He's an actual, he's a senator, is he not? Yes, Tom Cotton in clip number 19. I uh, spent several months patrolling Eldora uh, District in Baghdad in 2006 with the 101st Airborne. It's a tough neighborhood. There's a lot of militias operating there, too, including a lot of Shiite militias, which are backed by Iran. Uh, and it may not be coincidental that three Americans have gone missing in Baghdad just two days after President Obama got a hostage deal with Iran that showed the world that there's a price on the head of Americans in every country around the world, especially countries where Iran dominates. That's one reason why this hostage deal was so bad. Okay, he was with the 101st Airborne, he's a Republican, and he's a U.S. Senator, and you never heard of him. Now, he should have endorsed Trump, not Sarah Palin. I'll be back. It is gelato on the Savage Nation. I could use some gelato. 
So last night I got so upset hearing the news about my dog that I chose not to have a drink. Would you believe it? Instead, I did something weird. I ate like a chocolate tofuti that I had in the freezer for around nine years. It looked good. I didn't. I mean, I don't eat. I don't eat sweets. It was like I don't know, like chocolate dessert, but not ice cream and no dairy and no sugar. I don't know what was in it. I ate a half a container watching some car show. I, I didn't get depressed as a result, but I had a hangover that was worse than from from alcohol. Isn't that weird? I don't eat sugar for that reason. My joints hurt. I don't. That's why I don't eat sweets. Vinny on the internet. Welcome to the Savage Nation. Uh, Mike, uh, I was one of the callers back in 2004 when you were, you were asking uh, for suggestions on what kind of dog to, uh, to get. And uh, so I can I feel the pain that you're going through because I had an issue with my dog a couple of years ago uh, with the heart valve problem and needed to have surgery to have a tumor removed. And oh. with the, I went to a holistic uh, vet, and they suggested selenium as, as a mineral that will relax the heart valve, and also hawthorn berries and our Arjuna bark. Well, no, but, but no, no, he doesn't have a heart valve problem. He has a slight murmur. That's a little different. I, I, yes, uh, my dog had the same thing. It was just a murmur, but uh, the vet said that... All right, so I could get some selenium. I mean, there are many natural products that, can, that contain selenium. I eat them all the time. Uh, for, I can't give them garlic, but garlic is a rich source of selenium. There are other... Um, and, uh, there are other natural food sources of selenium. Selenium is a very tricky mineral, by the way. Now that you bring it up, I may as well tell a story, even though no one wants to hear about health right now. There's a famous story written in the um, archives of the travels of Marco Polo. Where uh, li Listen to this one to show you how vast my knowledge is. The, by, uh, the uh, historian of the Marco Polo voyages wrote this, At Ainos, the horse's hooves fell off. What did he mean by that? No one knew what that meant for hundreds of years. And then people went to that area, I think it was Ainos in Greece, A-I-N-O-S, where Marco Polo's armies were marching, and they were grazing on the grass in that area, and they investigated the soil. I found out that that soil was super rich in selenium. And that, of course, matches what we know today, which is that extra high dosages of selenium can lead to hair loss and nail loss. Did you know that? No, I didn't. See, well, I'm an expert in the field. People think that if, if, if a little supplementation is good, a lot is better, which is true about certain nutrients like C and E and, and other nutrients, but you've got to know what you're doing. But when you start dumping all sorts of nutrients down your throat in mega doses, you're running the risk of losing hair, nails, or killing yourself. Thanks for the call. But I was afraid I was going to get a caller to tell me to use a holistic treatment for Teddy's problem. And what, they're going to put wheatgrass juice in an enema? And what? Wheatgrass juice enema will cure the dog. Now, I'm going to take him to the dog dentist, and I'm sure his heart will straighten out. And I'll get him some false teeth. They don't make false teeth for dogs. Look at him sleeping on the couch during the show. He doesn't even know what's more. That's terrible. They don't know what's wrong. They don't even understand anything. Do they know about mortality? An animal knows fear. They fear death. I've been in a slaughterhouse. They know when they're about to be killed. That I know. But do they know these things? Do they just suffer in silence? They're so noble. It's why we love them. They're noble little guys. They don't complain to us every day. This hurts. That hurts. Give me an aspirin. They just they suck it up. They're little noble creatures. That's why we love them. Sleeping, it looks like a little teddy bear there. Listens to every word I say. Maybe he has a heart murmur from listening to the show. I don't know. I could be responsible. I mean, when I get angry and scream and yell, maybe he gets scared. That could have produced a murmur. It may have nothing to do with the bad teeth. I'll have to look into it. Okay, Lisa, KSFO. Line one, what's on your mind from San Francisco? I have a chihuahua who I took to the dentist to get his, well, to the vet to get his teeth cleaned because I didn't notice how bad they were until um, I never brushed his teeth before. And they found a heart murmur, same thing. And so he said I had to go see a cardiologist. So I went to UC Davis and they said he had an enlarged heart and congestive heart failure. And for a couple of years, I was just all these medications, which, you know, some worked, and then I had to take them back. And it was back and forth for a couple of years, but now he's on his medication three times a day, three different medications, because then it went into his kidney failure and then his heart I and mean, oh. lungs. It just... Oh, please. Annoying. But he's fine. People cannot believe. Five years later... They no, I heard this from another listener, a friend of mine. She said she had the same thing with her dog. They were, removed the rotten teeth and the heart murmur went away, and he's, he's like a, a puppy again. I wish I could say the same for me, but... Uh, 855 You see, it's a different world. Look what we do for a dog today. 
thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars to save a pet, which is a nice thing if you have the money. In my day, when my dog Tippy died, they found him with a heart attack at the bottom of the steps in Queens. My mother, God bless her soul, was an emotional woman. She came down, she cried. There he was, laying in, he must have died in the middle of the night, stiff as a board at the bottom of the steps in a little attached house. My father could care less. He said, call the garbage. <laughs> it's terrible. He said, call the sanitation department. That's how you got rid of a dog in those days. I swear to God. And the garbage truck comes up to Utopia Parkway. The two men come in with grim face. They look like pallbearers. They put on, they look grim like a dead pet. Where's the dog? It's in there. All right, come on. They came in with the brown suits. They looked like UPS drivers in those days, the garbage men. Grim. They were like Italian garbage men with the suits, like wool suits that a normal person, the skin would fall off. All right, John. They put the front paws, the back paws. I swear. Horrible. They start the thing going with mm, the conveyor in the back of the truck. One, two, a three. They Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. The Eagles. God takes another one away. We need a minstrel up in heaven. I hope he doesn't need a talk show host anytime soon. <laughs> okay. Uh, the, the subject's vast because my mind is vast, so we're all over the map. It's not just Democrat, Republican, Republican, Democrat, Cruz versus Trump. No Siri Bob. WSBA Radio in PA, that means Pennsylvania, to those of you who don't know what it means. Chris on line eight, what's on your mind tonight, my friend? Hey, I just want, I'm one of your uh, evangelical listeners, and I just wanted to uh, shed a little light on uh, why I'm a listener of your show. Uh, I guess uh, the main reason, the first one would be, uh, you know, of all the conservative talk shows I listen to, uh, the only one I can stand to listen to regularly is yours because of your genuine nature. Uh, you're not fake. It's clear when you listen to your show that it's not scripted. You speak from your heart. And as a Christian, that's important to me. Um, uh, the way that you talk. You know what I. You know what I. You know what I said in my head to that Amen, brother. That's what came right out of my head. But I didn't say it because it would sound like. But that's what I'm saying. It's true what you just said. But but having said that, what is an evangelical for those people who don't know exactly what that means, uh, Chris? What is an evangelical person? They basically to the world they would call call us a Jesus freak. Uh, you know, we are just people that are just crazy for Christ. Uh, we uh we believe in uh we believe in uh following God and all the ways that he teaches. We take the Bible literally, even though a lot of people think that's insane today. Uh we're not idiots despite what a lot of people think. Um and, Right. In uh, other words, you're the anti you're you're the, the the antithesis to a Bernie Sanders types, the Larry David types, the Woody Allen types. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> In other words, uh, <laughs> I hear by your laugh, you know what I'm saying. You're the opposite of what Katzenberg, Katzenberg, Matzenberg, Ratzenberg, and Weinstein would, would think. Absolutely. And one other thing I just wanted to say to you, too, is I have a son with, um, uh, with autism. Uh, he's 12 years old. And uh, one of the things that first hooked me in was years ago with that controversy where everybody was, all these people in the autism community who were attacking you, uh, which was completely ridiculous with, uh, when you made the comment that, you know, listen, a lot of these kids are just brats. And my wife and I, who have an actual autistic son, somebody who he'll never be independent. We have to bathe him. We have to wipe him. He's 12 years old. Uh, somebody who actually is an autistic son, that is, uh, I mean, your voice could have been my voice. I right, and I had a handicapped brother. Nobody has more compassion for the truly injured or born with deficits than me. I am talking about, or was talking about, again, misinterpreted by those who are using the genuinely injured people for personal gain. And it's unfortunately all too frequent in this society, frequent in this society with many disorders. There are many fakers out there. That's what I was talking about, Chris. It's the same as being banned in Britain for things I didn't even say. And I thank you for being a great listener to the show. What's this? Internet, Kevin, line seven, what's on your mind? Go ahead, please. Thank you so much, Dr. Savage, for taking my call. Um, you know, one thing you said years ago stuck with me, and I was talking with my mom about this this morning, and she got such a kick out of it. 
You brought up the point, time and gravity. Those are two 